Believe it and receive it. How many people believe it this morning? Y'all believe that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Today we will be talking about uh, Jesus. Isn't that great to be in church and talk about Jesus? Isn't that, that's, that's okay. Can we do that this morning? Amen. Yes. Um, you know, we, last week we talked about God uh, is, and we talked about the different names of God. And then in the end, we realized that Jesus is. Um, those names relate to Jesus. So we want to go over a few more of those names so that you'll understand who this Jesus is. Because I think that sometimes we just, you know, we hear about Jesus and um, we, we hear about him being the word and him being this and that. But we truly don't understand the, 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 the largeness of who he is uh, in what Matthew 28, 18 says. Uh, Matthew 28, 18 says that all authority in heaven was given to God. All authority in heaven was given to Jesus. And Jesus is God. And so to know that Jesus is one of the three part beings of who God is uh, and had all the authority in heaven and on earth. That's a powerful thing, and, 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 and sometimes our minds can't even think about how powerful that is. So we want to talk about that again today. Um, you know, if you remember, we, we said that in the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the original text was written in Hebrew. Do y'all understand that? The original text was written in Hebrew for the Old Testament. Now, the New Testament was written in another language. What, what was that? Y'all remember that? Greek. Greek. Greek was uh, the New Testament. Hebrew is the Old Testament. And... Um, and so that helps you a little bit in understanding when they say things like, well, in the Hebrew text, it was written, it said this. In the Greek text, it was written like that. And so when they're talking about the Hebrew text, they're talking about the Old Testament. When they're talking about the Greek text, they're talking about the New Testament. All right? So did somebody learn something this morning? All right? We're good? Okay, so that's what they're talking about. And so to clarify the original meaning, sometimes you need to go to an original text, right? Uh, sometimes you need to understand what the original text uh, says because, um, you know, I'm going to give you an example, but um, if you don't understand the original text, then sometimes the other text can be watered down. Now, it's great that, uh, you know, we have the text that's written in English, and that's all beautiful and all, and, and they've broken it down to where you can understand what they meant in the original Hebrew or Greek text. However, um, it enhances your understanding uh, of what was said when you understand the words in the Greek text as well as the Hebrew text. And so uh, I want to give you an example. Um, how many people in here have had a best friend before? Y'all remember in school, y'all used to have a best friend. Anybody ever had a best friend? Mm -hmm. um, and so if, you're, if your best friend years ago uh, didn't like the way you were acting and um, simply told another friend that they did not like the way you were acting, and that friend told another friend that they didn't like the way you were acting, and another friend, and another friend, and another friend. By the time it gets back to you, um, it's going to be a little different. Can we all agree on that? Yes. It's going to go from the friend uh, didn't like the way you're acting to your friend wants you dead. You know, right. it's going to be something like that. And so it's just like when if I told somebody in the back of the room a, a, a certain a secret. By the time it got to the front, it'd be a whole new secret. Yes. And so it's the same thing. Uh, it's the same thing in the scripture. Um, the scripture, people break it down in so many different ways that if you don't get t attached to the original scripture and the original meaning, it can be distorted. It can distort your way of seeing what they're talking about. And so uh, when you go to the original source, you get the original meaning. And uh, that's what we want you to do in the scripture. We want you to understand the original meaning. And we're just basically going over two words, the, the original meaning of God, the original meaning of the Lord, you know, the Lord Jesus. And so, uh, so in expressing that, I want you to understand that you don't have to uh, go to the original text to completely understand the scripture. You have enough in the Bibles that you have uh, to understand the original uh, scripture. However, what the original scripture does is it enhances the clarity. It gives you more clarity on what you're reading. And so you'll understand that Jesus is Lord, whether it's in the original scripture or whether it's in your, your, the scripture that you have. And so you are, everybody understand that Jesus is Lord, right? Amen. Every, say amen if you understand that. Amen. So if you understand that, that's enough. You don't need all the other stuff. You need to understand that Jesus is Lord. That's the main just of what we're learning here is understanding that Jesus is Lord. So in expressing that, I want you to know that you don't need to know all the names of God. Uh, there are tons and tons of names of God. Uh, you don't need to know all the names of God. You just need to know one. And what name do we need to know? That's Jesus. 
That's the most important name. Why? Because that's the only thing that engrafts you into the kingdom of God. Nothing else engrafts you into the kingdom of God but the fact that the Father sent his son down to die for you. And so we can sum the whole Bible up. In Jesus died for the sins that you have committed and he took it all in. He became sin so that your sins could be taken away. Amen. So that alone... So you just need to know one name because all the other names are just sources of the power that the Father has given the Son. Matthew 28, 18 says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That is Jesus saying that. He's saying that he's been given all these names, all these powers, all these authority has been given to Jesus, the one you worship, the one you adore. So you need to know that. So when we talk about these names, you need to know that in these names, these names all sum up to the one you serve. That's Jesus Christ. And so I want you to say this. I want you to say this real loud. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Say, Jesus is. Jesus is. Say it louder. Say, Jesus is. Jesus is. The first name we're going over this morning is El Shaddai. Y'all ever heard the song by Amy Grant, El Shaddai? And you ever wondered what she was saying when she said, El Shaddai, El Shaddai? Uh, and then she says, El Elyon, Adonai. Y'all know those words? Like, what is that? A hocus pocus? What is she saying? I know some of y'all have wondered for years and you just sang the song because it's beautiful and you know it's about God. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what it means. El Shaddai uh, is the song that she was talking about, but she's talking about God. And when she says El Shaddai, El Shaddai she's saying that God Almighty is God Almighty. That's basically what she's saying. El Shaddai means God Almighty. Now, I want to... Um, uh, make you, you know, help you to understand this more. It declares his ultimate power over all. So when you sing that song and when you say El Shaddai, you're singing God Almighty. I acknowledge you. I declare you are all powerful. And so it's going to make a difference when you sing the song from now on because then you'll understand what the song truly means. And so now you can truly say El Shaddai. You can truly know what it means when you sing that song and know how beautiful, just how beautiful that song is. And so it declares his ultimate power over all. Genesis 49, Genesis 49, 24 um, says this. It says, and, and, and this is referring to the mighty one of Jacob, the mighty power that Jacob was given. And so um, it says, but his bow remained steady. We're talking about Jacob. And it says, his strong arm stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob. Now it says, it speaks of the power that's constant in God saving and redeeming his people. Now here's the deal because we've read that before and we've understood that, that it's talking about his people. It's talking about, you see, his chosen people which were the Jews. And so you understand that and, and you look at that and you say, oh that's great. But you have to relate it to what you're dealing with now in understanding who Jesus is. Because if it's saying that, uh, it's, uh, speaking of the power that's constant with God saving and redeeming his people, guess what? There is another redeemer that you need to know about, another savior that you need to know about, and that's Jesus Christ. And because Jesus Christ died and was buried and was resurrected, and all you have to do is believe that he died and was buried and was resurrected, and that he is Lord, guess what? It includes you in that. When, the, when it says that, that, that God is redeeming, God is saving his people, it's talking about you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's talking about me. It's talking about me. You know what that means? It means that you can now relate this Old Testament to some of the things they went, uh, went through when it says God's people, God's chosen people. People, guess what? It's also talking about you too. And so for that alone, you should give a hallelujah to God and be yes, excited yeah, yeah, because yeah, anytime yeah. you read it from now on, you'll know that he's not just talking about the Jewish people. He's now referring to you through Jesus Christ because it's already happened. Hallelujah. So it speaks of, when it says uh, El Shaddai, it speaks of God's mighty, mighty power, his constant saving power, his constant redeeming power of his people which is you also. So you've been included in that. And so the mighty power of Jacob is the same mighty power displayed in Jesus reaching you. Because El Shaddai is the same power that Jesus was given. So that, you know what that means? It means that you have a Christ, the Lord, our Savior, who is El Shaddai, who contains the power that God has given, God the Father has given him to save, to redeem. And you know what he did with that? He gave it to you. He said that you are his child, you are his children. He wants you to go out and preach and teach his gospel. And he has supplied you with the mighty power, the mighty assistance of El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 
And so that, that makes you understand that. Now, I want you to say it again. Say, Jesus is. Jesus, Jesus is. is. Remember, we said God Almighty. We said El Shaddai. And she also says El Elyon. You know what that means? That means most high. Oh, oh. That means most high God. Now, you need to understand that the, he, uh, the Hebrew root uh, for that word means go up. You know what that means? Go up. It's God, uh, God's ability to raise us up, to raise you up, to, to, to take you from one aspect to another, to take you from being in the dirt and doing all the bad things to praising him and crying out hallelujah to the one who has raised you up. Amen. That is the power of God. That is who El Elyon is. And so you have to know that. You have to be able to understand that because that is a powerful thing. Deuteronomy 26, 19 speaks of this. It says this. It says, he has declared that he will set, uh, set you in praise. Now, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about his chosen people. Guess who his chosen people are? Raise your hand and say, I am, I am his chosen people. His chosen people. You have been engrafted in through Jesus Christ. So that's a powerful thing. So now, now that you know that, we can read this a little differently because now it's, just, it's speaking specifically of you. It says, he has declared that he will set you in praise. He will set you in fame. He will set you in honor. High above all the nations he has made. And then it says, and that you will be holy people to the Lord your God. Guess what? That's talking about every one of us in here. Mm -hmm. Because we are made holy through Christ Jesus. So you got you to gotta look at it as you are now part of the family. Can you, can you imagine who, uh, how a child is who is adopted into a family who does not feel they're a part of the family? You know how that is? Well, it's different now. You are engrafted into the kingdom of God. You are now the chosen people of God, which means that you are part of the kingdom of God. You know what that means? That means you have the same blessings that the Jews had. You are a chosen people through Christ Jesus. That's it, through Christ Jesus. Without Jesus, you're not the chosen people, but through Jesus, you are a chosen people. So that's a that's a beautiful thing, and and and, um, and so to understand that He has declared you and, and and set you in praise, set you in fame, set you in honor, set you high above all the nation. He has made you a holy people, able to receive Him. God Almighty is is what this song is talking about. When the song says El Shaddai, it's talking about God Almighty. And so it says, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. And then it says, El Elyon, Na Adonai. It's saying, God Almighty, God Almighty, God in the highest, O Lord. Isn't that just beautiful? Mm -hmm. And so when that song speaks of that, when you hear the song singing those, those lyrics and, and singing that, they're, they're just saying, God is mighty. God is mighty. And then it's saying, God in the highest, O Lord. So that is a precious thing. And so that's what Adonai means. Adonai means, O oh Lord. And so I want you to say again. Say, Jesus is. Jesus, Jesus is. is. Yahweh Nisi. Yahweh Nisi. Remember we talked about Yahweh last week. We talked about Yahweh meaning Lord. Not meaning Lord, but meaning Lord. It's always in caps when you say Yahweh. It's saying Lord. You're screaming out Lord. It's to a point where he shows up for you. And so it's saying Yahweh Nisi, the Lord our banner. That's speaking from Exodus 17. It represents the Lord's victory over the uh, Amalekites. Now, I need you to understand, uh, because it's talking about the Lord's victory over the Amalekites, and who's it talking about? His chosen people having victory over the Amalekites. Now, guess what? Who is his chosen people? Who are his chosen people? Look at yourself and say, me. You are his chosen people. So if it's talking about the Lord's victory over the Am Amalekites, through Jesus, it represents every victory that you have through God. You know what that is? A victory is you, you used to be lost, but now you're found. How many people are found in here? How many people used to be in the club doing all the crazy stuff, going in the left direction, but now Jesus has changed you? Think about something that God has changed you from that you have become now. Think about the movement where he takes you from the mental uh, uh, destruction, uh, the, the, the wrong capacity that you had to, to changing to the love of God, the love of understanding the praise of God, the difference in understanding how you operate in the flesh and moving from the flesh to the spirit. That is the victory that God has over your flesh. And so you have to learn how to, to, to understand that and know that the most high God is always with you, always helping you through situations like that. So God Almighty, God Almighty, God in the highest, O Lord. And so 
Um, if he is our banner, how many people know that God is your banner? He should be the first and foremost in everything you do. When you pray over your food, you're making him your banner. You're saying he is the first and foremost. Yes. You know what? When you bless somebody, when you pray for somebody, say, hey, we need to pray for you. When you pray for that person, you're making God your banner. You're putting them first and not last. Amen. Now, what are times when we don't put them first? When we don't put them uh, the first in our lives? It's when we look at, you know, our food and we feel shy and we're not going to pray because uh, we feel somebody's going to look at us and judge us according to how we feel at that moment. Instead of saying, bowing down and, and blessing the food, whether a quick blessing or whatever, we're not doing it because we see people around us. That's not making him your banner, but the, the awesomeness of God is he is your banner whether you like it or not. And like we said last week, the scripture says if you'll deny Jesus, he'll deny you. If you deny the Father, he'll deny you also. And so you've got to accept God. You've got to accept him in every part of your life knowing that he is the first. He is always your banner. He is always the one who gets you through stuff. Anytime you overcome something, it was done by the blood of the Lamb. Anytime you overcome something, anytime you get through a situation, it was done by God. And so this is the, the way of acknowledging him as the banner through um, uh, understanding that he is the victory. He is the one who gets you through uh, your situation. Every victory that you have is through Christ Jesus. Now, Psalm 23 is a special psalm uh, because um, that psalm, everybody knows how that psalm goes. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing or I shall not want, depending on which scripture you have, I mean, which book you have. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside uh, quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, y'all know it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How many people know that scripture? Everybody has heard that scripture before, but do you understand it? You know, because when it's talking about the Lord, when it's talking about that way, it's saying, it's talking about Yahweh Rohi. It's talking about G the Lord Rohi. That's the Lord my shepherd. Now, I need you to understand what this means when he says the Lord my shepherd. He's talking about, this is, da of course, this is a psalm by David, right? This is David say, realizing that he was a shepherd to the, to the sheep and he had all these animals under his control. He's saying God is the same way. He is the shepherd of, uh, of us. He is the one who leads us. As a shepherd, what do you do? You lead. You lead your sheep. You make sure they're taken care of. You, If they're in danger, what do you do? You take your staff and you go after the wolf. You go after the wolf or, or and you run after the wolf. You chase after, you chase them off, but you protect the sheep as a shepherd. And so what this is saying is this is saying that, that God is the same way. It's saying the Lord my shepherd. It's saying uh, Yahweh Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. This is where David was talking about his shepherd, his, his being a shepherd. And he's saying that because of that, now I understand how, G, how God is my shepherd, how he protects me when I go through bad situations. And David went through some bad situations. David went through battle after battle after battle, but he always trusted God as his shepherd. And because of that, guess what? The protection came in. And so what you got to understand is, is as a Gentile, a non-Jew, the same Lord that shepherded David shepherds you also, but he shepherds you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so that's powerful to understand it, that the, the, the things that David did. How many people knew that David was a mighty man of God? How many people agree with that, that David was a mighty man of God? How many people agree that David had protection from the Lord, that the Lord was always with David? Well, the same Lord that was with David is with you also through Jesus Christ. That's why you should be excited because when you start to understand the aspects of who this God is, who this Jesus is, the power that he has, the authority that he has, it goes from just reading the Old Testament to understanding that this Old Testament relates to me also. When I need protection, I have the same protection that David needed and that he had. So it makes it more powerful for you when you're reading and understanding, when you understand that it relates to you. So now when you read the Old Testament, read it from the perspective of you being a chosen child of God. So I want you to say this, say Jesus is, Jesus is. Yahweh Sidkenu. You know what that means? It means the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness, Yahweh Sidkenu. And this is screaming out, Lord our righteousness. Lord, our righteousness. In Jeremiah 33, 16, the Lord guaranteed Judah's salvation. And it also guaranteed Jerusalem's safety. 
and um, what that means when it when it when when uh, God guaranteed Judah's salvation and Jerusalem's safety, it they used the same word the Lord as Lord uh, Yahweh Sidkenu, which means that He is the protector, saying. Uh, only God provides righteousness. And so it makes you understand that righteousness can't come from anywhere else. It can't come from serving Buddha. It can't come from serving any Muhammad or anybody else. It only comes through one direction, and that is the Lord. Guess what? The Jesus Christ that you know, the Jesus Christ that gave his life for you, the Jesus Christ that took in sin, has the same power, has become Yahweh Sitkanu. This makes you understand that salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. Christ, which means that you are in the right service. You are serving the right God in understanding that he is the only one who saves. And some of us have, uh, you know, I, you know, like me, I've looked through different religions and I, 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 I couldn't find the foundation in, the, in some of the religions I looked at. There was some the great that you had peace and all that, but you didn't have any foundation in it. And what I found when I found Jesus Christ or when he found me or when he drew me in, I understood that that is the thing that was missing from the other religions that I was looking for. I didn't have God in the flesh who saved me. I didn't have God in the flesh who took in all the sin. I didn't have God in the flesh who gave his life that I may have life. Now I am forgiven just in believing in him. Not, be, not walking the perfect line, but understanding that God is with me and he never leaves me nor forsake me. That is the beautifulness in yes. understanding Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. So it's so powerful in understanding that Yahweh, Yahweh sickened you. He's the Lord our righteousness. He is the only one who makes you righteous. Nobody else makes you righteous. You should be glad that you are a part of uh, the system of understanding Jesus Christ. You are a part of operating in the spirit of Jesus Christ. You are a part of having the Holy Spirit with you who never leaves you, who always protects you. Because, I want you to write this down, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. It said, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know what? We are made right through Jesus Christ. And you know what that makes you understand that there, the, the, he had no sin. He took in the sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God. That means that even though you have done some bad things, even though you have said some wrong things, even though your past life was, was uh, rebelling against God, Jesus took all of that in. And when he took all of that in, guess what? It, 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 was, it was released from you. You know what that means? That means you walk in righteousness. When God sees you, he only sees the beautifulness of Jesus Christ. Now, to, uh, I, I guess in our flesh to understand that is, is, it's nearly impossible to do. But when we get before God and see the righteousness that God puts upon us through Jesus Christ, oh, you'll be praising God for the rest of your life, understanding that through him everything is beautiful. He doesn't see the sin that's within your life. He sees the glory of God that he's placed in Jesus Christ. He see the fact that Jesus died for that sin. He died for everything you've done wrong. He died for everything you can possibly do wrong. And because of that, you praise God every single day of your life, thanking him that Jesus, uh, Jesus drew you in because of the Father. That is, a, the, that is such a precious thing. And so this makes, you, this makes you understand that Jesus is such a precious, precious, precious Lord. Everybody say, Jesus is? Jesus is. This time we're saying Yahweh Sabbath. Yahweh, Yahweh Sabbath. Can everybody say that? Say, Yahweh, Yahweh. Sabbath. Yahweh Sabbath. The Lord of hosts. Now, the Lord of hosts, the word host means hordes. That means a lot. <laughs> you know, when, when he said the Lord of hosts, he means hordes. And he's talking about hordes of angels, hordes of men. That means that whatever God wants to be accomplished will be accomplished. Mm -hmm. For that alone, you should praise God. Yes. You should give glory to God because you thought you were lost. But because God is the God, Yahweh Sabbath, he has complete control, complete direction. He knows whatever he wants to happen will happen, whether you like it or not, with you or without you. God is in complete control of what he's doing, which means that your salvation, 
Your salvation was not a mistake with God. It was a plan, purpose that he had, and he can do all things but fail. Did you know that? God can do all things but fail. And so if you understand that, then the largeness of this is that the, he has enough angels, he has enough men uh, to get accomplished what he wanted to get accomplished. Now, John 6, 39 says this. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall not lose none of all he has sent me. You know what that means? Yahweh Sabbath doesn't fail. He, he's incapable of making mistakes. He always accomplishes what he set out to do. And so that's a beautiful thing because you know that in your life, how many people have failed before in your lives? How many people have made mistakes before in your lives? How many people have done some wrong things in your lives? How many people have said some wrong things in your lives? How many people, if you could do it over, you'd go back and take back some of the things you've, you've done? How many, people, how many people feel that way? If you feel that way, say amen this morning. Amen. amen. There are some things that I wish that if I could go back and do, I'd do it differently the second time. There are some things that I wish that if I could go back I, the third time, I'd do it right the third time. There are some things that I wish I could go back and do, but here's what you need to know with God. He does not. He's incapable of making mistakes. So he knows what he's doing before he does it. He knows what's going to happen before he pursues. And so he knows what he's doing. And so if you know he's in complete control, then John 6.39 is giving you the power to understand that this is the will of him who sent, uh, sent Jesus, that he shall lose none. Guess what? He's not going to lose any of us. He has a plan purpose for us, and he has a plan desire for us. So you know what's beautiful in that? When you pray for somebody, you don't have to fear their salvation or their lack of salvation. You just pray and have faith in God that God will do what he's supposed to do with that person. You just, as a vessel, go out and do what you're supposed yes. to do. Tell people about Jesus. Right. Share the Lord with people. Yes. And you don't feel condemned because if the person is lost, they were lost before you talk to them. And they'll be lost after you talk to them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yes. So you understand that as a vessel, it is your duty to go out and talk to people about Jesus and not be fearful of how you said it or what you said. You know that if you speak uh, from the spirit of God, that in the, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person and you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Because Yahweh Sabbath is always there and he has control over the angels, even to, to, to be controlled through the mistakes that you make. So that's a beautiful thing. John 10, 18 says this. This is Jesus saying this. He says that no one takes my life from me. Did you know that? Because some people say Jesus was killed. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. This is Yahweh Sabbath speaking. This is Jesus, the mighty one. He says that no one takes my life from me. This is Jesus, El Elyon. This is the most high God, our God almighty, El Shaddai. This is the one who has all power, all authority. He said, no one takes my life from me. He says, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. I got that from my Father. You know what that's speaking of? That's saying God has given Jesus the full power, the full authority, so you don't have to know all these names. You just have to know the name of Jesus, Jesus. to which every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Once you know that name, you have all that power roaming through the one you love. You have to know that Jesus is our redemption with God. He is our acceptance as children of God. He is our sin acceptor. He took in every sin you have committed. You know the ones you felt guilty about that you did years ago? That you wished that if you did it again, you would not do it? You know those things? You know, people who drank, smoked, did all those old bad things. How many people have done that? Stop acting like nobody in here has done bad before. Uh, it's funny because y'all will raise your hands about everything else, but you won't raise your hands when we talk about drinking. You're like, drinking, not me. Smoke? No, I've never smoked. I've never done any of that. But you have to know that Jesus is the one who accepted the sin. He even accepted the sin of pride that we have over ourselves sometimes, where we think we are holier than thou, 
when we think we are too good to talk to somebody on the street, when we think we are too good to, to minister to somebody who doesn't smell so pleasant, when we talk, think we're too good to talk to somebody who may have been drunk or who still drink, uh, still drunk. You, you think we're too good to talk to somebody who may be high at the moment. We think we're too good to talk to people like that. And that, 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 that pride that we have, Jesus even accepted that pride. But as children of God, we have to know that we were nothing. And the only thing that makes us something is the love of Jesus Christ. He was our sin acceptor. He was the worst, yet the best of God. When I say the worst, I mean he took in every bad, uh, pitiful thing that we've done. He didn't even deserve it, but he took in everything we've done. Even what we do now, when we ignore the scripture, when we ignore the, the wisdom of God, when we don't listen to him, he still took that in before you even committed the crime. And so everything you need from God, you get through his name. Romans 14, 11 says this. It says, as sure as I live, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I need you to understand how important it is to say that Jesus is Lord. I know you've done some bad things in your life, but it's still important to say that Jesus is Lord. I know, I know you, you, you sinned and, and, and you may have cursed on the way over here, but it's still important to say that Jesus is Lord. I know that, that, that you, you may have went in the wrong direction sometimes and not listened to God, but it's still important to say that Jesus is Lord. I know, I know that you've resisted the, 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 the attachment of God upon you. You've resisted the ministry that he's placed upon your heart, but I know that you need to understand how important it is to say that Jesus is Lord but even in the midst, even in the midst of your crazy thinking, God has forgiven you. God has stepped in. Yes. He has accepted that sin. Yes. He has accepted your rebellion. He has accepted everything that you've done, even though you don't know it, even though you don't understand it right now. You need to know that God has accepted yes. all of that. He's yes. taken that in. Even your ignorance is saying, I don't even know if there's a God. He's taken that in and he's replaced it with the love of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. And you need to know that, Jesus. that even in your ignorance and not understanding, God has protected you all these years. Yes. We call God Jehovah Rapha, the great physician, and we say, well, God didn't heal me when I had this one. When, when we didn't understand that God has always been healing you. He's always been restoring you. Every day of your life, you're yes. not sick. He has restored you. He has renewed you. He has bridged yes. the gap between you and God. Yes. Mm. So you, the most important thing in understanding is that Jesus is Lord. Sometimes your flesh don't even want to say that, but your spirit has to understand that he is Lord. He brought you here this morning. Nobody else brought you. You have to, you have to go beyond your flesh and sometimes just stand and say, God, I just accept you. I know I've done wrong. I know I've went in the wrong direction. I know I've said some bad things. I know I treated people wrong. I know I treated my family wrong. I know I've cursed people out. I know I've talked behind people back. I know I've been all those bad things, but I just accept Jesus as Lord. And it's all forgiven. That's where God starts to work on you. That's where you start to go through some stuff and understand the grace of God. Yes. That's when you go through things and cry out. You used to cry out to people. You used to go with your flesh, but now you cry out to God and say, God, I just don't understand it all. Hallelujah. I know I've been going through something. And sometimes, you know, God, the, he does what's best for us. Sometimes we have to go through the worst times in our life yes. to finally reach out and say, yes. okay, I might as well accept God. Jesus. We say, God, work on my heart. He works on your heart by taking everything away because if he takes everything away, then you'll focus on him. Yes. Thank you, Father. And so sometimes you have to be able to stand and just say that Jesus is Lord. I need everybody to stand to your feet right now if you can. You. Romans 14, 11 says, As sure as I live, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. 
He's saying that's going to happen anyways. Every single person on earth is going to eventually say that Jesus is Lord. Amen. The dead and the, uh, the, the, the dead who, who rise and are convicted will be able to say, oh, I guess he is Lord. Uh, the people who are in this room will be able to say Jesus is Lord. But you want to be a voluntary army. You want to be somebody who accepts Jesus for who he is, even though you know you're going to go in the left direction sometimes. Even though you know you're going to not listen sometimes. See, to, to, to say that you listen 100% of the time is to say that you are Jesus. And that's not true. Every one of us makes mistakes right. in the Lord. Yes. Every one of us. But you have to trust God to work in you to weed out those things, to take you through your tough times so that you'll understand the reason you're going through the tough times is he's working stuff out of you. He's changing you from yes. who you used to be to who you need to be. And so because we go through bad times, we think we're going through the worst time in our life. But the worst time in our life is the best time in our life if we have Jesus Christ with us. I'd rather have everything or have nothing with him than to have everything without him. Because to have everything without him is destruction. Yes. 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 You have got to accept the fact that the reason you're yes. going through what you're going through is because the Lord is working in your life. He's trying to do what you uh, do with you what you have asked him to do yes. all your life. God help me, make Woo. me better, make me better with my family, Jesus. make me better with my children, make me better in my household. Yes. Help me. And he helps you by taking everything that pulled you away from your family away from you. And then what do we do? That is what happened to me. I'm just telling my story. That's what happened to me. God took everything so that I could finally, truly listen to him. Mm -hmm. And he does it to you also. Jesus. You got to be willing to understand and confess with your heart. I need everybody to close your eyes right now. Thank you, Father. Close your eyes and I need you to hold your hands up if you truly want to accept Jesus. And I need you to scream out. I want you to scream out real loud. I want you to say, Jesus, Jesus is Lord, is Lord over my life. Over my life. If you believe that, give God glory in the Woo! house this morning. If you truly mean it. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.